Hello, everyone. Uh, we are here today to discuss Bloomberg Intelligence Generative AI Report. Uh, let's dive straight into the numbers. Uh, Mandeep, the report concludes that there will be $1.3 trillion in new revenue generated by 2032. Could you please give us the breakdown of that spend? Yes, uh, we did a bottom-up analysis of this new market that we think is going to have widespread ramifications across uh, different uh, markets such as hardware, semiconductors, software, gaming, and digital advertising. And our analysis is predicated on how the penetration levels across these end markets is going to evolve over a 10-year period. So uh, essentially, the focus is on hardware training and inference right now. But uh, you will see in the back end of our forecast, we think the adoption is going to grow as the cloud infrastructure evolves for some of these services. So then why is there such a massive demand for GPU chips? Well, so that's where, you know, uh, you need the GPUs for training these large language models. And uh, obviously, everyone is familiar with the, the two big earnings speeds that we saw from NVIDIA this year. And what it has done is establish this market for, you know, the large language models that uh, everyone has to either curate on their own or use an existing large language model. And our view is uh, right now the spend is on buying these chips and boxes and storage. But over time, you're going to see uh, the hyperscalers come out on top in terms of both their own chips as well as offering uh, what NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel uh, have to offer around uh, training these large language models. So in fact, I, I do want to pivot to you, Anurag, and ask you where do you see the uh, biggest kind of end market demand beyond hardware given you cover software and the adjacent sectors? Yeah, so the number one place I would say is uh, the hyperscale cloud providers, as you said. Um, these are companies who have the ability, very fast compute, very fast storage, um, and that's where a lot of these models will live eventually. Um, and that's, I think, the number one area of focus for us in software. The second one is a lot of the enterprise software companies, you know, such as the likes of Microsoft and Adobe, uh, that have a very large consumer uh, presence they are the ones who I think would be the next one uh, to, to benefit from it, especially with the co-pilots that they have launched. In the area of software development, I think we'll see the biggest attach rates, the areas such as GitHub, Code Whisperer, um, you know, those are the ones that really stand out to us. Yet on the enterprise side, you know, the likes of Salesforce and Workday, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make sure that the enterprise data is safe uh, before running those large language models on them. And finally, I'll just add, uh, you know, we have an interactive tool that's available on the terminal. You can change your assumptions. We have a 10-year forecast. You can change all these assumptions, as well as there is a lot of in-depth analysis on each of the sectors and how they are going to be impacted by generative AI. So I would encourage everyone to take a look at that.